The Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Reaper Apparel Company. Reaper Apparel offers a casual line of superb fit, finish, and comfort. We design for those who refuse to die slowly and choose to live untamed. For those who aren't afraid to face the dark, for the ones that thrive in it, and for those who can appreciate life through a grim lens. That's Reaper Apparel Company. Go to the link in the description of this episode, use the promo code Mike Bono, and get 10% off. Also, the Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by my own personal merch store, the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. I have hats, I have t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, water bottles, notebooks, you name it, I've got it. The description and the link for that will be in the description of this episode. Also, right now, if you use the promo code WELCOME, I will give you 5% off of your first purchase. That's the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. Also, the Rod Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Tactical Brotherhood. All American Made Apparel, which helps support the Second Amendment. You can also find all this in the description of this episode with the link Tactical Brotherhood. Part of every proceed does go to helping veterans, as it is a very good cause. All American-made products made right here in Minnesota. Go and check them out. Use the promo code PATRIOT15 to get 15% off your purchase. Now, let's start the show. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Ride Home Rants podcast. This is, as always, your host, Mike Bono. I got a great and annual episode that we do here on Ride Home Rants podcast. It is the best time of the year. It is football season, and the NFL is about to get back into the swing of things. So I have a panel of guests here. We're going to talk all things NFL, but first and foremost, I got to get these sponsors in here, and that is Buddy's Beard Care. Buddy's Beard Care is premium men's grooming products made right here in Ohio at an affordable price. Buddy's Beard Care supports local. The majority of their suppliers are from other Ohio-based companies. You can find them on social media at Buddy's Beard Care or online at buddiesbeardcare.com. Use the promo code BONO10 and he will give you 10% off. Also, we have another great sponsor uh, in Sweet Hand Sports from Matt Lando Landowski. You're going to hear from him here in a little bit. He is one of the guests, and I'll shamelessly plug that to as well. But elevate your game with Sweet Hand Sports. Our sports gloves are designed for champions, providing ultimate grip and durability. Achieve greatness with every match. Choose Sweet Hand Sports for the winning grip. They're not just baseball gloves anymore. He has a golf glove now. I got to use it. I didn't think I was going to get out and get to play much golf this year, but I got to use it. This thing's phenomenal. Uh, Unfortunately, Lando, it did not help my golf game. Uh, And I don't think anything can uh, help that golf game. I got a terrible, terrible golf game, but love to get out on the links. But grip your victory at sweethandsports.com. Use the promo code Bono10. He will also save you 10%. Now. I did just land a new sponsor right before this show, so we're going to get through this read here with them, and that is Deemed Fit. This is first responder-owned company to help with first responders' physical and mental health. A lot of their proceeds going to help first responders and military alike. I am wearing the hat. Sorry, Lando, I had to wear the new sponsor's hat tonight. Could not wear the Sweet Head Sports hat, but... Here it is, Deemed Fit, D-E-E-M-E-D-F-I-T dot com. Go there, check it out. They have a great line of men's and women's products, too, as well. You're not going to be disappointed with them. Use the promo code Mike Bono, and you will save 20%. <sighs> I feel like these sponsorship reads are getting longer and longer every as, as the show goes along. Nothing wrong with that. Love all of our, all of our sponsors, but... We're going to get right into it here, and we are going to let these guests announce themselves. So, guys, when you announce yourself, I need your name, what college you graduated from, and what pregame song is the best in football. And since we talked about them 
Lando, we're going to start with you. Hey, Bono. Thanks for having me, brother. Hey, uh, this is Matt Landowski. I went to Bethany College. And I'm going to go with Thunderstruck with ACDC. Can't go wrong with Thunderstruck. Absolutely. Next on the list, we got Bill. What's going on, guys? Appreciate you having me on again, Bono. Uh, excited to talk football. It's uh, it's in the air, as Matt was saying a little bit ago. Um, Bill Soy, Kent State, Golden Flash, proud alumni. Uh, as far as best warm-up, got to be bring them out. Nothing better than you're doing your high knees on one side, you're looking over other side of the 50, the other squad over there. That'll bring them out and play and brings you back to the good old days. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to talking some ball here. Absolutely. And last but not least, rounding out our roundtable here, we got Aaron. Hey, what's going on, Bono? I appreciate you having me back on the show. Um, <clears throat> Aaron Fry graduated from Bethany College. Shout out to Matt Landowski <laughs> and Bono. Um, <laughs> but um, I would say me personally, anything DMX. So the DMX intro on his dark as Hel- it's dark and hell is hot album is my favorite. But I think like as far as collective, it's got to be Enter the Sandman by Metallica. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh, if you Enter ever Sandman if you ever watch tough. Virginia, if you ever watch Virginia Tech, that ain't nothing gets you more jacked up to go ready to hit somebody. I gotta tell you that that's a solid choice, Fry. I gotta tell you that there, man. I was conflicted on this one between uh, Enter Sandman and Thunderstruck, like you said there, uh, Lando, because uh, Sons High School, he plays for the Philo Electrics here at Ohio, and they play Thunderstruck being the Electrics every pregame when they're warming up, when the team's running out on the field. I got to tell you, for a high school game, it gets the fans hyped, man. I can't I can't not go, go with that one, so. I'm going to have to say Thunderstruck and go with you there on uh, on that one, Lando. But yeah, uh, I'm a big classic rock guy, so wow. Uh, I can I, I can pretty, I can listen to pretty much anything classic rock. Enter Sandman's a good one too. I like that. Oddly enough, it was named. Uh, I can't can't help but uh, put this in there, but it was the number two best tradition in college football. The number one though. Near and dear to my heart, my Mountaineers and Country Roads after a win, after a victory, that is still number one best college tradition in college sports. So uh, I got to love it. That's a solid top two for me. But let's jump right in here to the NFL. Lando, we're going to start with you. Uh, which one team has the most approved this season? Most approved? I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with Detroit. Okay. Detroit. Yeah, they uh they fell a little short last year. They have the same game plan, which I like, you know, going fourth and goal, fourth and short, whatever, you know. And um a lot of people were cutting them up a little bit, I think, last year after they uh fell short last year a little bit in the playoffs versus the uh Niners, and I just I just think it's their year, man. I I think they got a lot to prove this year. So, not a bad choice, Stoy. What about you? It, I feel like this is the one every year. It's the Cowboys. I feel like oh. every year where it's the, the same storyline, um, kind of becoming a butt of a joke along with my my brownies. Um, the Cowboys in the playoffs every year can never really get over the hump. So we'll, we'll say them. I, I think you know, you got Jerry Jones getting older. Uh, last year, Dak on the contract. I mean. If not this year, is there a rebuild coming? What's it going to look like? So I'll say the Cowboys again, probably the same answer as the past few years for me. All right. Fry, what about you? The most improved. No, most, most to prove. Oh, the most to prove. Oh, I'm glad you said that. I'm going to go Philadelphia Eagles. Um, you know, I think Philly, um, they fell short. They, they um, you know, with the offseason moves they made to trying to – I uh, get back to the Super Bowl um, for from falling short and having you know dang near a championship roster. Um, you know I think they underachieved last year and then being able to come out there and go get Saquon and then making a move to get Jahan Dotson. Um, I really think that uh, they're in championship mode um, and I think they got the most to prove. 
Absolutely. I, I never thought of Philly. I wasn't even thinking of Philly for this one. For me, it's Pittsburgh. You know, I think Tomlin, you know, okay, he hasn't had a losing season, but it's been a decade since he's really done anything in the playoffs. I, I mean, I'm a fan of Pittsburgh, not a huge fan of Tomlin. Uh, unfortunately, I think his Super Bowls, uh, those were Cowers teams that he just kind of took over. Uh, I get he hasn't lost or had a losing season, but if you're not competing for championships in Pittsburgh, like that town will hang you out to dry faster than anything in the world. I think it's the Pittsburgh Steelers this year. And I hate to say that as a fan, but I got to go Pittsburgh on this one. Uh, Lando, let's go back to you. Uh, which one player has the most to prove this season? Oh, um, I was talking about this earlier with um, one of my buddies, and I think TJ Watt's going to come out with a little extra fire under his rear end this year, man. I, I, I I really do, man. I I, I do. Uh, he he kind of got cut from the uh, what defensive player um, of the year award last year, and I think he's have a little fire, man, this year coming out. And uh, yeah, I think he's gonna be a little bit ticked off. So that's not good if TJ Watts ticked off, but ticked off TJ Watt that spells trouble for a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL this year. Stoy, what about you? It uh, might be trouble for who I'm going to say here, uh, Deshaun Watson. I, I think yeah. for the Browns, you got everything around him, have kind of for you know a couple of years now. Miles Garrett, I mean, Nick Chubb should be back healthy after a few weeks. Got Judy added. I mean, defense should be great again. I think in Deshaun, if you can just come out and be close to what you were in Houston – um, that really should be the only thing holding the Browns back from a really successful year. So, uh, we'll say to Sean, haven't seen any, uh, anything worth 230 million yet. So we'll see how yeah. that goes this year. Yeah. Especially with them talks of a new stadium there in Cleveland. Yeah. You definitely need to put up some wins for that couple billion dollar domed stadium that they're talking about there in Cleveland. But Fry, what about you? Man, you know what? I really wish you would give us a top five for this one. Um, but um, I, I, I got to go to, to me. Um, I'm going to give my honorable mention to Jalen Hurts, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go with um, Najee Harris. Um, okay. Yeah, I, th- I think Najee, um, you know, him not getting the him, the Steelers not getting his fifth year option is going to be like a little extra added motivation. Um, you know, he did something that nobody's ever done in, in um, Steelers history as far as going over three uh, hundred. Uh, I'm sorry, a thousand yards every season. Um, and then it's like, you know, hey, you know, I, I, why why aren't you buying into me? So I really think Najee has the most to prove this year. I think Ward put a lot of pressure on him. The other running back that Pittsburgh has. Mm-hmm. Um, he showed out last year, you know, and I think if that doesn't light a fire under Najee, and them not picking up his fifth year option, that's 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 a tough look for for Najee. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's you mentioned him as an honorable mention for it's hurts. You know, uh-huh. I don't know how you start the season on fire like you did and then just crumble when it matters. You know, uh-huh. when they what were they one and seven in the last couple of, in the last eight games or something like that, and then just choking in the playoffs, albeit to my Buccaneers. I'll take that though. Uh, but, um, but yeah, you know, it, I think he has a lot to prove, uh, Pickett is a solid backup there and they got Will Greer as the third string quarterback up there right now. I think he made the 53 man roster. I'm not, I got to double check that. Uh, but you know, that's two solid quarterbacks as your backup that are just waiting to take your spot. I think he has the most to prove to keep his starting job there. Uh, this, I. When we were coming up with this one. You guys are going to know this is this is a fitty question right here. So, uh, Lando, outside of Andy Reid being the best coach in the NFL, who are the next two best head coaches right now? Oh, um, best coaches besides Andy Reid. Yep, the next two. So, Andy Reid, who's two and three for you? Well, I'm going to go with my man. 
uh, Dan Campbell, MC DC baby, Motor yep. City Dan Campbell. Yep. And I'm also going to go with uh, go with Shiriani. Okay. The Eagles, yeah. Solid two picks. Right I, there. I, I, I do a wall for those guys, man. They're they're intense. They're intense. You watch them on TV. They're intense. Absolutely. So. Stoy, what about you? Uh, I, I think Shanahan got to be in the discussion for sure. Um, so Shanahan will say, and then might be a little bias coming out, but two Coach of the Year awards already. We'll say Coach Stefanski, uh, Kevin Stefanski out of Cleveland. Uh, I think maybe some people disagree, but again, two Coach of the Year awards in the past handful of years. So um, got the hardware to prove it. Okay, Fry. Um. I think the, the the next behind Andy Reid, I mean, you got to look at consistency and track records. So obviously I'm going to go with Mike Tomlin. Um, it's very hard to win at, at games in, 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 in the NFL and especially to do it on a, on a year to year basis. Um, you know, I'll give credit where credit is due. Not having a losing season is really impressive. Um, and then uh, shout out to Dan Campbell because he's doing amazing things in Detroit. He's turned that culture around. But I, I'm going to go with Kyle Shanahan um, behind Mike T and um, Andy Reid. Um, Kyle's been really consistent. Um, you know, there, there's a there's a handful of other coaches I think that are well deserving, but I think it's definitely when, when it comes to those three, I think that's the the bar, the standard in the NFL right now. Yeah, this one was a tough one for me, you know, and I know I know I just shit on him in the last question, but Tomlin's definitely in my top three right there for the no losing seasons. But uh, it was a toss up between Shanahan and um, Dan Campbell. But just what Dan Campbell was able to do with Detroit and turn that franchise around, in my opinion, I got to go Dan Campbell and Tomlin. Uh behind Andy Reid. Uh, I think they flipped their, you could flip flop either one and two and three there, but yeah, I, I, I got to go with it. Yeah. And I know I'm really contradicting myself with just crapping on uh, Tomlin, but yeah, go ahead, go ahead yeah. and get rid of him. Send him up to Cleveland. <laughs> you can have him. You can have him. Take him. He'll get you to the playoffs, but you won't do shit after that. I'll tell you that. And so, but no, Tom is a great coach. You know, the, Never having a losing season as a head coach. I mean, that that's, that's tough to do at any level. You know, even you go down to peewees, it, it, it's hard to be a coach somewhere and never have a losing season. So got to go with that from, for the one, that one there, but uh, Lando, will the Houston Texans be as successful as they were last year? Or do they take a step back this season? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think they'll be just as successful. Okay. They, they, I don't see any. I, I don't see them being like a Super Bowl contender. Even but, with adding digs? No, nah, no. Nah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I just, no. Nah. I'm. I'm going to defer. I was going to answer this one right after you, but I'm going to defer this one because I need to think this over here for a minute. But Stoy, what about you? Heck, the Texans, are they as successful? Think, so they overachieved last year for sure. So what Orlando's saying, kind of being on par, I, I could see that. Once you, I mean, they won a playoff game last year. Once you get to that level of the playoffs, I mean, those are tough games. You're, you're, you got, you know, you're playing Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, um, one of those guys is sort of going to go and win probably two playoff games. It's going to be tough, but. I'm a believer in Stroud. I think that the addition of Diggs got a ton of weapons. Um, defense should be solid again. So I'll err on the side of better. But, I mean, it, again, once you get a game or so into the playoffs, those are tough, tough, tough sledding games. So I uh, wouldn't be surprised if it's right around that, you know, one one playoff one as well. But I got them winning the division as well and definitely can see him making a little push. Okay. Brian, what about you? Um. You know, I thought about this one actually a couple of weeks ago. Um, I love what D'Amico Ryans has done down there. Obviously doing the same thing, I feel like, as far as being on track is what a Dan Campbell would do. Um, turning around a whole city that has just been irrelevant for years. 
Um, I honestly think the Texans uh, took a step forward. Um, and I say that because they, they got opposite, they created opposition by getting uh, Danielle Hunter from uh, Minnesota, who I think has a couple good years left uh, to compliment Will Anderson. Um, I, I Will Anderson had a great, unbelievable rookie year last year on, uh, d- defensively. And then D'Amigo Rhines is a defensive guy. Um, and then looking at that offense, I mean, you added Diggs and Mixon. Um, and, and Nico Collins, I think, takes a step forward. And Tank Dill uh, takes a step forward. I can't really see. You know, obviously, I think it's, it's a tough division because I think the Colts um, will be tough. Um, with um, Anthony Richardson and the pieces they have in order. Um, and then the Jaguars could be, you know, uh, up in the air. But um, I definitely think the Texans win the division, and I think they, they take another step forward. Yeah, this one was, was tough for me because I think Straub, as much as I'm a fan of him, takes a step back because I, I don't think he can be as good as he was last year, even with adding digs. But I think that defense for the Texans carries them. So I'm going to say kind of with Lando on this one, I think they're just as good with the defense making up for Stroud taking a step back. I mean, he came up uh, off like a bat out of hell last year. No one really expected it from him. Now I think people are expecting it from him. So they're, they're game planning for him a little bit more. So I think he takes a little bit of a step back, but the defense makes up for it. So I'm going to, I'm going to agree with Lando again on this one here. And I'm going to say they're going to be as good as they were last year. I don't think they get better, but I don't think they get worse. But uh, Lando, who is under more pressure as a QB this year, Aaron Rodgers for the jets or Deshaun Watson for the Browns. Oh, uh, you know, I was just thinking about Rogers. No one really, we haven't really mentioned him yet. And, uh, that's funny. He brought that up. Yeah. Uh, go with Rogers though. I'm going to go with Rogers. The tail end of his career. He's what, like 39, 40 years old now. I, and, I think he'll be 40 when, as the season goes on. Yeah. And I mean, this is it, man. I mean, he's coming off a serious injury. Um, it's incredible. That he's even coming back, honestly. Yeah. And, uh, I think he has a lot to prove this year, man. He's yeah. Proof. yeah. After only yeah. playing four snaps last year, I think, yeah, he has to see what he could do for New York. My, my pick for this one is Rogers. I think I know where you're going with this one story, but uh, you may surprise me. So what do you got on this one story? No, I think you're right. It, 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 as far as Rogers, I think, I think some pressure there, especially for New York, but say Rogers has a mediocre year retires after the year. I mean, still hall of fame quarterback, Packer legend goes down in the, in the history books. Um, so I don't think there's really all that, all that much to prove. I think he, you know, can go and be a legend of New York as well. If he could bring that team to go in a super bowl and be relevant in the playoffs and stuff. But Deshaun, I, I just think, you know, has had his good years, a few good years out of Houston, but you know, it's one, maybe what a, a playoff game or, or so. Um, so I think, you know, he has so much more to gain um, and so much more to prove a ton of money. Um, can do the same thing as Cleveland, be a savior. You bring a Super Bowl to Cleveland, like think of how much you have to gain. So um, I'd say Deshaun for sure. Okay. I really thought you were going with Rodgers on that one, but I, I had a feeling it was going to be Deshaun for your brownies on that one there. But Fry, what about you? Run us out here. Yeah, I got I got to um, follow up with Stoy on that. I think it's uh, Deshaun Watson, without a doubt. Um, you know, A-Rod, um, you know, injuries happen, um, and it sucks that it was like the fourth or the fifth play into the, into the season last year with all of the hype surrounding the Jets. But you know, the Browns went out and they took a leap of faith and 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 signed Deshaun Watson for an unbelievable amount of money. Um, and then you know he's been hurt. I don't. He's not not really been on the field for the Browns at all. Um, and I, that's got to hurt Browns fans tremendously. Um, kind of, sort of, I mean, Joe Flacco came in and saved the day, but <laughs> when you, when you, when you dump that much money into a guy, you kind of expect him to be available. Um, and I think Deshaun Watson hasn't been that for the Browns. Um, and, and so that's why I got to say Deshaun Watson on that one. Yeah. I don't think he's, has he played a full season since he's been in Cleveland? I know he was suspended for the first year, but then he was hurt. 
You know, it's, I don't think he's played a full season since he's been there. And you're getting what two hundred thirty million dollars going on year three of the five year deal, and haven't seen yeah. too much yet. Yeah, hey Cleveland, I could do that. Hey, give me that kind of money. I could do that as a quarterback. Like, let's go. Like, what are we talking about here, Cleveland? Like, you know, for that kind of money, shit, I'll play with a broken arm. I don't, I don't care. But yeah, I mean, uh, I still got to go Rodgers. You know, on this one, like I, I was thinking about it a little bit more. No, I, I still, still got to go Rodgers. New York is tough, uh, but he is a legend of the game. Uh, coming back from you know, that, that injury, how quickly he did, uh, is a testament to him as it is. But I think, I think he has a lot to prove this year, but Lando, who is your regular season MVP pick? Oh, I'm going to go with, uh, does it matter offense or defense or no, who's, who's your regular season MVP? Regular season MVP. I'm going to go with uh, Jared Goff. Jared Goff. I did not expect that one. Yeah, I think he's have a big year, man. Okay. Goff, Goff it is for, for Lando there. Stoy, what about you? Here, man, I'm real big on the line. So just. I can see that. Yeah. I'm picking yeah. up on that there, Lando. I'm picking up yeah, on that line Jared, coming out of you. <laughs> I just think this is, this is it, man. I think this is their year, man. So. I can't argue that. I, I think they only get better, you know, with Dan Campbell and Goff. But well, only time will tell with with Detroit. They they seem to be that team that you, you root for, but they always find a way to disappoint you at the end of the season. I I, I I hate to say that, and you know, I say that as a Pirates fan. We'll go a little bit MLB. I root for the Pirates every year. I know they're going to go out. I know they're going to try their best. I know they're going to lose and I love them anyways. You know, that's, that's just how I am with, with that. Uh, and I feel like lions fans can relate to that, but mm-hmm. Sto- story, who's your, who's your MVP? The, the mid mid uh, career, Jared Goff comeback season MVP would be crazy. Uh, but they, they're balling up in Detroit and he's leading it. So, uh, wouldn't be the craziest thing. Um, I, I think, I mean, so many good options on this one, so many good options, but I'll go back to Stroud. I think, again, if they're leading that division, I don't think they had, I mean, they had a mix in, but I see them you know, incorporated into the pass game as well. So I don't see them running the ball too much. I see them spreading it around a ton. I think he can accumulate a lot of stats. Um, and I think he was, you know, towards the back of the year when he was performing so good, a little chatter for him last year for him. I think if we can have a good young quarterback, have a really good year NFL and uh, you know, the media and everything can really latch on to that. So um, we'll go Shroud. I, I think it'd be a little bit of an upset, but I like him a lot. Okay. Bri, what about you? All right. Um, I got to go with two attack of a lower. And, you know, I, th- I think that I think two is going to take a step this year in that Miami offense. Um, they're, they're loaded offensively. Uh, but him just getting his big payday and being, you know, more motivated to go out there and being able to, um, you know, lead the Dolphins to a deep playoff run, I think Tua gets gets the MVP this year. Hey, I I didn't I wasn't even thinking Tua, honestly. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to play it safe. I'm gonna have to go Mahomes on this one. I hate to pick Mahomes. I really do. I love him as a quarterback, but I'm getting kind of tired of seeing him win MVPs and Super Bowls. To be quite frank, it was it's it's like he's starting to become my hatred for Tom Brady, and it wasn't because he wasn't good. It was because he was so good that I couldn't stand him. You know what I mean? He's just one of those guys. Is like how how does one person possess all these skills, and why do you have all of them? And it. Mahomes is starting to become the, the the new Tom Brady for me. I, I I know he's talented. I know he's the best quarterback in the league right now with what he's doing in Kansas City. But quite frankly, I, I'm, I'm tired of seeing him win. You know, I just I, I hate to say that, but about anybody. But I'd like to see him. But he he's definitely. I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to say he's my MVP of the regular season this year. But Lando, you're gonna to have to follow me on this question here for a little bit here, because uh, this is 
it's long. And this is definitely Fitty's question for sure with this one. But in the AFC North, there is a ton of pressure on Mike Tomlin to win his first playoff game in 10 years with the Steelers. And John Harbaugh for the Ravens needs to show he can be relevant with Lamar Jackson in the playoffs. Kevin Stefanski with the Browns has a top three NFL team with Super Bowl aspirations. If things go sideways with these teams and they aren't competing for a playoff bid and a Super Bowl, what are the odds that all three of these coaches can be fired this offseason? So you're saying all three? All three. So, uh, all three of these trips don't make the playoffs. All three teams, you know, they don't make the playoffs. Uh, Tomlin can't win in the playoffs. Again, he has a winning season, but can't win in the playoffs. Uh, Stefanski, you know, he does what, you know, the Browns have done the past couple of years in the playoffs. And, you know, with all these teams have Super Bowl aspirations. And, you know, John Harbaugh uh, trying to be relevant with Lamar Jackson. If all three of these teams can't produce what they're – aspirations are you think all three coaches are still coaching these teams next year yes that was it this is a loaded question for this sure lo- i can go many different ways on this one um i'm gonna say yes because um Because they're all, I mean, they're all three great coaches, man. I mean, it's it's tough to find a coach you trust and can stick with and um that you can build an organization with. It's not easy just yeah. to throw them to the side. And these are I mean, and everybody knows the AFC North is the toughest conference in <laughs> <laughs> it's football, baby. So That's it. This was a tough one because you know I I like the AFC North, uh, and these are three great but three great coaches. You know John Harbaugh, Super Bowl champion, Mike Tomlin, Super Bowl champion, Kevin Kevin Stefanski, he's right there. Uh, Stoy, what about you with these three? Do you think these three, if they don't produce what they're supposed to, do you think these three coaches uh, could be fired this offseason? I think Fitty's reaching a little bit. I think Fitty's reaching here. Uh, I think all three, I, I mean, you can see a, a way. I, I think Harbaugh got to be safe. I mean, they would take a real disaster up in Baltimore. I think to see him gone. Um, you see, you know, Pittsburgh or Cleveland go like four or five wins or something like that. Um, maybe you can see a, a scenario where one of them are gone, but um, I, I'd be really shocked to see any of the three not coaching for the same team next year. Take a real meltdown, I think, across the board for it, but I would say all three coaches are safe. At least one more year. Talk, talk, two more years. Uh, I think there could be a little bit more wiggle room in there. But I think each has proven enough to this point to have kind of a gimme year if something would go awry and give give another chance. I got gotcha. you. Fry, what about you, my guy? All right. Um, so I'm going to say I'm going to say no, but I'm going to go down the list here and say that um, – I'm not, I don't think all three would get fired. I would say as Tallman just signed an extension and I feel like, you know, they have a championship defense, but they haven't had the pieces on offense in order to kind of um, move the needle through and get and kind of um, get on a playoff run. So I'm going to say Tomlin's safe, but I'm going to say Harbaugh is not safe. And I'm going to say that because of the talent he's had defensively and offensively with, you know, Lamar Jackson and the things he's been able to do. They, and they went to the, they just went out to get Derrick Henry. Um, and then a, a second year, Zay Flowers. And offensively, they're good. Defensively, they're, they're definitely primed to make a championship run. So, so I could see an early round exit will be a hardball exit as well. Stefanski, ah, that's a tough one. I mean, the, the, the Browns definitely turn their franchise around. Um, you know, they got a top three defense in the league and, uh, offensively, they really, really put it together. I mean, you got arguably the best back in football when he's healthy and Nick Chubb, 
you went out to go get Deshaun Watson. You just picked up Jerry Judy, and then you got Amari Cooper and David and Joku. I mean, Stefanski Stefanski could be on a hot seat too with, with a with a uh, first round exit. Um, if you know, obviously, if they lose, I, I think those two get fired. But I think Tomlin's the only safe one in this one. Yeah, I. That's kind of where I, I, I'm leaning on this one. They just extended Tomlin. Pittsburgh has had three total head coaches. You know what I mean? And I, they're that team that holds on to their head coach and they build the program and the team around the head coach, uh, which I kind of agree with. I think seeing the NFL and seeing some of these coaches getting two, three years, you're not giving them enough time to build their program and to do what they need to do to be successful. Uh, I think with this one, I think Harbaugh and Stefanski are on the hot seat. Harbaugh for sure, because he has a lot of talent there with Lamar and everybody there in Baltimore. Stefanski, I'm on the fence with. I think the Browns hang on to him at least one more year. Uh, but an early round exit, it's going to be tough for that front office to to hang on to him because I think the city of Cleveland might riot if they have an early round exit and the fancy still has a job for one more year. Uh, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, I, I, I really think there's two of these three coaches that are on the hot seat this year. It, it, it's Harbaugh and Stefanski. Uh, but Lando big question here. Who's your Super Bowl prediction and winner? Ooh, I like that. Uh, well, I'm a Steelers fan, so we're going with Pittsburgh, baby. Going Homer. And uh, I can't forget about the Lions, so we got to go with the Lions in the NFC. So Steelers, Lions. Who's your winner? Steelers. Nah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Homer, Homer Lando. Is a <laughs> Stoy, what about you? Uh, not not going to go the Homer Browns pick here. Uh, heard thank you. you say, you've, you've done that the past two shows. Uh, the yeah, NFL. I, I learned, you've picked the Browns. We're, <laughs> we're gonna do a little reverse mojo here to see if I pick someone else, we can get the Browns win. But uh, h- hate to say it, but I, I I do like what's going on in Baltimore. So I, I see you guys say, obviously, great team out there, and I do agree. You had Derrick Henry, if he got another really prime year left in him, um, I mean, man, that's a scary backfield with him and Lamar. So um, good defense, you, you know, got Zay Flowers still coming along. Uh, Mark Andrews, you know, seemed to have some weapons. Um, you can have a scary running back in that backfield with Lamar. Could be crazy there. So we'll, we'll go Ravens. And then I think the Niners, I, I think they just have, again, probably the best roster in the NFL. So we'll say Ravens, Niners, and, and Niners finally get it done. Um, tough to pick against Kansas City in any fashion, but we'll go a little contrary with it. I'm sure someone will mention them. Um, we'll say we'll say the uh, the Niners get it done this year. Okay, right. Um, so I, I I've been thinking about this probably for like three weeks now. Um, I'm just gonna throw a wrench in there. Um, in the AFC, and I'll I'll predict that after my NFC. I definitely think the Lions get it done this year, and they get to the Super Bowl. You know, I like what Dan Campbell's done. Um, I definitely think he takes so many risks as a coach. I think that came and, and bit him in the butt in the uh, NFC Championship game versus the Niners. I think they, I think he figures it out and gets to the Super Bowl. And in my AFC, man, I, I'm going to go with the New York Jets. Um, you know, that's it's 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 tough. Um, but I, I honestly think it's a revenge year. Um, you know, I think Aaron Rodgers is proven to, you know, do what he do what he does. You know, he's one of the best quarterbacks to ever play. Um, he's he got out of Green Bay to go to, you know, hopefully a contending team. They have a they have, with Brees Hall healthy, um, and Garrett Wilson and and some weapons to kind of get the job done on offense. Their defense is probably again a top three defense in the league. I think he can ride the coattails of the defense and get to the Super Bowl. That's and I, th- I, I think the Lions won the Super Bowl, though. Okay. I was going to say, you haven't told me a winner yet, but you yeah, know, I, I, the Jets, though, that's 
I'll, I'll say it. That's a bold stance, man. I, you mm-hmm. know, to pick the Jets to go to the Super Bowl. Um, oh, mine on this one, I, I'm really trying not to be a homer here with saying Tampa Bay uh, and saying that Tampa Bay gets it done and, and makes the Super Bowl behind Baker, uh, Mike Evans, and those guys there that they got on offense. But uh, for the NFC, uh, the AFC, I, I definitely think it's the Lions. Um, I definitely think the Lions get there in the AFC. Um, it's hard to pick against San Francisco. Uh, I, you know what, Stoy? I, th- I think I'm going to go with you here in Lions and San Francisco. However, I think the Lions get it done. And they beat the Niners in the Super Bowl. Uh, you got two NFC teams. That's two there, NFCs. I mean, oh fuck! Yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's, NFC, it's been a long. It's been a long day for me, y'all here, and uh, <laughs> we're running out of fumes here. Oh, now I got to re- really rethink this. Because uh, yeah, the Lions are NFC. Uh, how did I not? How did I forget that? Um, Baltimore. We'll go Baltimore, uh, but. Uh, I think I think the Lions get it done this year. I really do. Dan Campbell and what he's done with them and playing angry with how they got knocked out last year. Um I, I, I think Dan Campbell has that team angry and that's that's a terrifying decision and to, to face the Lions when they're when they're angry. Um uh, so yeah, I, I got uh Lions and Ravens with the Lions getting it done and these next questions, we're, we're going to make it quick here. Uh, I just need a yes or no on this one here, Lando. Will Bill Belichick be a head coach ever again? Wow. Um, no. No? Stoy? Yes. Fry? No. I say yes, and it's next year. Uh, okay, last question here. We're going to round it out with this one here. Uh, and this kind of could be a little fun one here. Uh, Lando, name your top three NFL quarterbacks of all time. Brad Ford, Ben Roethlisberger. Terry Bradshaw, baby. <laughs> Three Steelers in there. <laughs> <laughs> Story, what about you? I went with the toughest, man. Those guys are tough as nails. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with Bradshaw. I'm not going to lie to you on Bradshaw. I agree that he's up there. I don't think he's top three, but yeah. We'll, uh, we'll go with the Goat Brady, uh, Montana. And Marino. Marino. All right. Bri, what about you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Tom Brady. I got to go with the Sheriff Peyton Manning. Mm-hmm. And I got to go with Joe Montana. Yeah, that's that's my top three as well. It's uh, Brady, Manning, and Montana. I, I think those are the, the, the best three quarterbacks that of, of all time. I don't know how you go against Peyton. Uh, definitely Brady. Uh, like like I said, I know I I hate him because he's that good. Like people like were like, "Oh, you're gonna be a Tom Brady fan because he went to Tampa." And like, no, I'm happy he gave us the Super Bowl. But no, stop being so good that late in your career. I, I don't I don't I I don't agree with it. Like, why are you that good? Um, clean black and uh, black and gold over there. Well, we'll bring him. Yeah, he can come back to Pittsburgh. We'll see if he can bring championship to Pittsburgh. That'll be tough. Yeah, it's like him going to the Jets and trying to be <laughs> make it like Aaron Aaron Rodgers there in uh, in New York. Uh, but that's actually the last question we had here for the NFL roundtable. I want to thank Matt, Bill, and Aaron for joining me here. It's a lot of fun. Always getting to sit and talk football. Um, a lot of hot takes here. So um, I'm interested to see how these play out. I'm interested to see how the season goes. Uh, I am being a little bit of 
uh, a homer this year, and I am going to be rooting for my Buccaneers and my Steelers. Uh, I know. Yes, I have two favorite teams. I grew up an hour, for the new listeners, I grew up an hour outside of Pittsburgh and West Virginia. West Virginia doesn't have a pro sports team in anything. Uh, so I always root for the Steelers. There's one time a year when I don't root for the Steelers, and that's when they're playing the Buccaneers, if that ever happens. And it's happened a couple of times. It's a tough game for me to watch, uh, like both teams. But I am a Buccaneers fan at heart, but I always root for the black and gold growing up that close to the stadium uh, and being that close to Pittsburgh. But that is going to do it for this week's episode in our NFL round table preview. I want to thank my guests again, Matt Lando, Landowski, Bill Stoy, and Aaron Fry. Thank you guys. This was a lot of fun. As always, if you enjoyed the show, be a friend, tell a friend. If you didn't tell them anyways, they might like it just because you did. That's going to do it for me. And I will see y'all next week. The ride home Rams podcast is brought to you by Dubby energy. Energy drinks made for gamers, streamers, and podcasters alike. For gamers, streamers, and podcasters alike. Go to the link in the description where you can find the best energy drinks out there. Less caffeine than a cup of coffee. Also, no jitters and no crash afterwards. Use the promo code Mike Bono and get yourself 10% off. Also, the Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by my favorite sponsor of the show, and that is Shankit Golf. Golf apparel made for the everyday golfer. We might not go out and shoot a six under par. We're probably going to shoot a six over par, but this is going to give us the gear that's going to help us rock it on and off of the course. Go to the link in the bio. Use the promo code Mike Bono and get yourself 10% off there as well.